Hey Aries, welcome to your June bonus reading. If this is your first time here, my name is Laura. I'm from babycurltarot.com. This reading is going to be a little different compared to the past bonus readings. Typically I do money and love. I am going to be switching up my readings moving forward just because my schedule has changed and I don't have as much time to do the full 20 to 30 minute reading. So I'm trying out a different setup this time with you guys to see how I like it. So we're just going to see what comes up for you guys this week. What do you guys need to know this final week of June? Let's go ahead and start off with the Numinous deck. Now, again, this is not limited to my Aries sun signs. This could be Aries sun, moon, rising Venus, whatever placement in Aries you want to check out, you're welcome here. And don't forget to check out um, your other signs, past signs that I've done for this month to get a full idea of what's going on for you guys this month, okay? All right, Spirit, what messages do you have for my Aries for this week? Whoa, okay. We have Pluto, the planet of transformation. Now Pluto is currently retrograde, so maybe this week Pluto is hitting something like an aspect of some sort with you guys that's affecting you a little bit more this week. What's at the bottom of the deck? We also have Saturn in retrograde too. So Saturn and Pluto retrograde could be hitting some of you guys pretty hard this week. Um, if you guys have like an astrology app where you can check to see where the planets are right now, how they're aspecting your own natal chart. Highly recommend that. Um, and even just see what they're aspecting um, with other planets, just where the other planets are currently. Excuse me, I'm having trouble finding my words. <laughs> All right, let's get into this next deck spirit. What do my Aries people need to know this week? What do my Aries people need to know this week? Oh, hello. Let's see, we have consciousness. Okay, so bringing your awareness to something. <clears throat> Excuse me. At the bottom of the deck, we also have peace. Okay, so I feel like Spirit is saying, where can you consciously make more peace in your life? Or where can you create more peace in your life? Or where can you remove things, people, so on and so forth to create more peace in your life? That message is coming through very strongly for someone maybe a lot of you. And honestly, I feel like Saturn and Pluto retrograde are kind of all about that. Yes, retrogrades can be chaotic, but in that chaos, we're really supposed to be understanding like what we need to let go of, right? So for a lot of you guys, it could be something that has been holding you back in terms of feeling at peace in one area of your life, whether that's relationships, work, family dynamics. I mean, you take what resonates for you. Definitely take a look at where Aquarius sits in your chart because Saturn is currently retrograde in Aquarius and take a look at where Capricorn is in your chart because that's where Pluto is right now. <clears throat> All right, let's get into these tarot cards and see what comes up for you guys. Spirit, what messages do you have for my Aries people? What do they need to know for this week? What do my Aries people need to know this week? Okay, we have the Ace of Wands reversed, the Eight of Swords, the Nine of Cups reversed, the Fool card, and at the bottom of the deck we have the Page of Wands. Okay, feels like some of you guys are having trouble starting something or making a change. I feel like this came up in your love reading or something that came up for you guys in June. Um... And again, it doesn't have to do with love. It could for some of you, but this could literally talk about anything. So take what resonates here. I feel like a lot of you feel like you're not really happy somewhere in your life. Again, maybe that's a job. Maybe that's family, a living situation, whatever. Apply this message to whatever it resonates with for you. But it feels like a lot of you guys have gotten to a place in your life where you thought you would be happy or you thought you should be happy and you don't feel that way. It almost feels like some of you feel even stuck. Like, I feel like I should, this is something that like everybody dreams of or I've been dreaming of and I don't want to seem ungrateful. So I don't want to leave the situation even though it doesn't make me completely happy and fulfilled. Does that make sense? And it's like you keep putting off this new fresh start 
Okay. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, with the Ace of Wands reversed, it feels like you're just not taking that action. You're not taking that first step. And for a lot of you, again, it's just maybe you feel a little trapped, stuck, whatever that feeling is that you're feeling. Um, but what we don't see here underneath the deck is this page of wands. And typically, I don't know why I did this. I usually have it like this with the full deck underneath so I can see the other cards underneath. So we have the page of wands here, which does talk to me about there may be a new opportunity or something you've had your eye on for a while, something you've been thinking about starting for a while, like a passion project or just something that really ignites your soul and your spirit in general. So maybe you want to make a career change or you want to go back to school and learn about something completely different than what you studied before. But it feels like there is a calling here for you to follow your passions and maybe that's a new relationship. I don't know. For some of you guys, it could be just something that makes you, that kind of like wakes up your inner child. It just brings out that joy in you. We also have the nine of pentacles underneath the page of wands. So for a lot of you, I do feel like this could be stability related, maybe even health related. Um, but this could talk about like your home life or your, you know, your finances, your stability, business, um, could be a number of things, honestly, but it feels like following whatever, this passion is, it makes you feel a lot more independent and it makes you feel a lot more secure. It makes you feel stable. For some of you, it's a sense of freedom, not having to work for someone else, or maybe you're just stuck in a relationship that does not feel right for you. Um, for some of you, I heard maybe, again, this is going to be very specific, so take what resonates. If it's not for you, it's not for you. For some of you guys, it's an issue of Maybe you're not attracted to the gender you thought you were. I heard that as well. Okay, and maybe you are kind of craving some time to get out of a relationship so you can figure out figure out what it is you actually want in a relationship. Okay, we also have the Seven of Pentacles reversed and the Eight of Cups. Yeah, it feels like you guys are wanting to walk away from something that you put a lot of time and effort and energy into, but it's not really bringing you what it is. It's not that wish fulfillment or that wish fulfillment that you thought you wanted. Wow. Okay. So a lot of realizations I'm feeling for you guys this week, um, coming to the forefront about, you know, something that just isn't quite what you had imagined for yourself and maybe trying to figure out what exactly it is you do want and how to make that first move in making that happen for yourself. So I don't know if you guys will be taking action this week, but it is going to start kind of popping up in your head. And maybe it has already for some of you. Um, I do feel like for a lot of you, this is something that has already kind of started. But for a lot of you, maybe this is going to be the week where it actually comes to the forefront of your mind and you start to really sit and think about, well, does this really make me happy? Okay, that's what I'm getting for you guys. I'm going to go ahead and move this and leave this there. This is going to be, again, a really short reading. My schedule has changed, so I'm trying to play with time and see, you know, what feels comfortable for me and, you know, how in-depth I can get with the messages. I do want to go ahead and move on to the Oracle deck section of the reading. So Aries, if you enjoy this reading so far, please leave a like and a comment that lets me know that you enjoyed this and um, makes me make more of these. So. I want to go ahead and dive into the Moonology Manifestation Oracle. We do have a new moon in Cancer coming up this Tuesday. Um, so great time for manifesting new things in your life. Okay, the full card here. <clears throat> new starts, new beginnings, new projects, whatever it is. This is a really, really great new moon. A lot of great aspects to it. Um, so I highly recommend doing something for it if you are magically inclined or you like to manifest uh, script, journal, whatever it is. Um, but let's take a look and see what messages Spirit has for you for this week's Spirit. What additional messages, advice, or encouragement do you have for my Aries people? Here we go. Oops, we got two. Ooh, new moon in Aries. Go for it. Look at that. So Spirit definitely wants you to get started and go for what it is that you want. Go for what makes you feel at peace, what makes you feel happy. 
And we also have the first quarter moon in Gemini. Speak your world into being. Okay, start manifesting, speaking what it is that you actually want. And I think for a lot of you, it's more of just like verbally recognizing with yourself and with other people what it is you actually want or letting people know that, you know, this isn't quite where I thought I wanted to be at this point in my life or in this situation. I want more or I want something completely different. That is okay. Um, just obviously watch out with being negative. You know what I mean? When it says speak your world into being, that means manifestation. And we don't want to speak on the things we don't want because that's what we're going to attract more of. So just be aware of that. Be conscious of that as you um, speak about your feelings and your situations <clears throat> and what you actually want to see happen in your life. Very important. At the bottom of the deck, we have the new moon in Libra. Know you are loved. I feel like for a lot of you guys, you may worry about what people may say or think um, about what you're feeling and how you're feeling about your current situation. And I feel like for a lot of you, you'd be surprised how many people will actually be supportive of what it is that you want to do or what you want to change up in your life. So again, just do what makes you happy. I mean, first and foremost, I always tell people that do what makes you happy. We only live one life, and as cheesy and as cliche as it is to say it, we do. And life is too short to live unhappily. So I always say, go for what it is that you want, even if it was something that you didn't think you wanted before. It's never too late to change directions, okay? All right, let's get into the next deck, which is the Daily Crystal Inspiration deck. Spirit, what additional messages, advice, or encouragement do you have for my Aries people for this week? What additional messages, advice, or encouragement do you have for my Aries people this week? Okay, we, <laughs> we have Red Jasper, take action. And Red Jasper is actually a really great crystal for my Aries in general. It helps kind of keep that... Um, that motivation and that spark and that energy going for you guys. So if you ever feel like unsure of yourself or you just feel like you're not really motivated, that would be a great crystal to pick up and, and keep on you. So that way you can kind of keep the momentum going. We also have, oh wow, Phantom Quartz, Embrace Change. Yeah, yeah, it does feel like there is a change for a lot of you guys. You guys are switching up something really big here. Um, so again, just just go with what feels right. Your intuition, your gut feeling, you know, if you're thinking about something a lot, that is, that's a sign that it's something that's meant for you, all right? At the bottom of the deck, we have Unakite, live in the now. Yeah, don't worry about what happened in the past. Don't worry about all the time, energy, effort that you put into whatever you were putting your all into before. It's all about what it is that you want right now because we're always changing, growing, and learning. And sometimes we learn that what we wanted in the past is not necessarily what's right for us. And that's okay. It's okay to change. It's okay to, you know, embrace what it is that we are now, what we're feeling now, what we want, desires, all of that stuff. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the Tea Leaf Oracle deck and just see what else you can potentially expect this week. Spirit, any final messages for my Aries people? Any final messages for my Aries people for this week? Let's get the other half of the deck. Spirit, any final messages for my Aries people? Any final messages they need to be aware of for this week? Okay, it looks like just one. Fire, strong emotion, passionate love, or hate. Wow. Wow. Ooh, okay. I mean, a lot of fire in your reading in general. So this is all about some sort of passion, I feel like, for a lot of you. And I'm hoping it's not a hate situation, but maybe it's that passionate dislike for something or a situation that you're in that's going to be the motivation to kind of 
get you to where you want to be. I hope that makes sense. But that is what I'm seeing for you guys this week. Please leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed this reading. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Um, if you want to get a personal reading from me, I do offer them. You can look, uh, link up with me through my website, which is below in the description box. If you want to see more content from me, I am on Instagram, TikTok. I also have a blog. All that info is below as well. As always, though, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful week, rest of your month, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!